coming back from having a day off. Welcome to Off the Charts Hollywood. We're located at 6803 Melrose Avenue, right in the heart of Melrose District. And we're open seven days a week. So pull up, team no sleep. Charts Dispensary. We are located in the Hollywood area here off Melrose, 6803 Melrose Avenue to be exact. Uh, we were formerly 64 and Hope, um, named originally after Proposition 64 that legalized cannabis in Cali um, and the hope to create, you know, equity, generational wealth, uh, bridge the gap. But some things unfolded and we needed to pivot. And that's what we did about a couple months ago. So we are now officially off the charts. And since the transition, um, there's been exponential growth um, in the amount of people that come in a day, daily sales. So we're on the up and up, which is great. There's just a lot of um, internal things when it comes to transitioning Halloween weekend. So I anticipate that being one of like our biggest events of the year on top of making this transition. Our, our, main, our main goal is to always have the customer experience given to everybody that walks in the store. Good morning, Dalen. How are you? Do you have any feels about being on camera today? Um, uh, the camera ready, I just gotta look in the mirror. Okay. Here, let me let you go in the back. We're all about bridging community, creating opportunity, um, and making better lives for our future generations to come. So starting third grade, I got bussed out to Canyon Elementary, which is in Brentwood. And from there, that automatically allowed me to go to Par Revere for middle school, Palisades for high school. You know, it was just, I didn't have any issues. Those are like sister parent schools. Once I was on the bus at such a little tender age, we're talking about third grade, just seeing how far I was traveling and realizing there was just so much more to life than just LA. Um, I think that's where I get my well-roundedness because every summer I made sure I went to all my home schools. So I did Dorsey for summer school, I did Crenshaw for summer school a couple years. So it was the best way to keep my ears to the streets, you know? Um, and I knew what was going on inside and outside of LA. And I think that's always like a power move when you're just not stuck in one place. We're not trees, right? Especially if you don't like where you are, move, move. Move, always move, never stay stagnant. Um, with the decision my parents made to get me bust out at such a young grade, um, it was very scary for me because I used to be able to walk to school, you know, and they would wait for me on the corner. That was a huge transition um, to getting on a bus, a school bus, alone, 
um, and not knowing anyone going to a new school. But I think it was the best decision they could have made for me because that ultimately allowed a whole new level of understanding and just getting to know people that were not like me, right? And so that's when I definitely um, started to become integrated with totally different ethnicities, races, and um, cultures. And I think that's so important, especially coming from a melting pot city um, and somewhat melting pot state. I think it's important to, to realize that it's bigger than just you. It's bigger than yourself. And that's where you really learn that community matters the most. Going to Palisades, I think, was the best move for me. I have no regrets whatsoever. Um, by the 11th grade, I think by the 11th grade, I was done with most of my classes. So I was just going for half days, got my permit, started driving up there at 16, ditched that school bus real quick. And for me, it was a shell shock whenever I would go to high school, I mean to summer school, because Palisades was an open campus much more freedom. We could walk up to the village. Um, the first year I went to Dorsey Summer School from going to Palisades, um, I realized the difference in neighborhoods because they had trash cans chains, chained to the poles. They put us on lockdown, like the gates were closed closed. And I was just kind of like, oh, okay, so there is no going off campus to get food. Um, so I think that internally, it's so important to be able to compare and contrast contrast where you are um, in relation to who you are and what you stand for. Um, I have no regrets going to Palisades because I also feel that I learned a lot there, like econo economically speaking, um, educationally speaking. Um, I think I, I was stretched the most there um, in a good way. So when it comes to edibles, my starter gummies, were Caminos, um, and specifically my very favorite one, Pineapple Habanero, super uplifting, had me uplifted AF. Um, I say it was my starters because each piece, the originals, each piece was like five milligrams a piece, so it was little, you know? And then once I graduated, kind of like stepped my game up, I got into the wilds. And those are all 10 milligrams a piece, um, right now my favorite is the blood orange. Ooh. So this one is half THC and half CBC. So people know about CBD. CBC is another like body high cannabinoid, um, but it is a mood booster. So it, it's literally allowing your brain to produce more serotonin so you're more happy. So someone that's a little depressed, down, this is a pick me up. That's the one I always try and um, recommend for people. Now, some people that like indicas, they want to stay away from sativa enhanced gummies, but this one specifically is okay for even the indica lover um, because it doesn't have a specific um, terpene that gives anxiety. It's, it's literally calming, happy, mood boosting, everything you can ever want um, in a happy drug without having to go and pop a, I don't know, a Zanny or something, I don't know. So after high school, I think my main focus, I really wanted to be in front of the camera. Um, I thought I was gonna be a little model bae or a little actress bae. But then um, I ended up doing Santa Monica College because that's when I was actually having fun doing the acting and singing stuff. But I wasn't, I couldn't do both. I couldn't be on point with school and do the fun stuff. Some people can, I could not. Um, and so I saw a huge difference in uh, my grades. And so I took a year off, had my fun, went back, got serious, transferred to UC San Diego. Um, still wanted to be in like production. I didn't get into San Diego State 
which had the journalism and all that program, but I got into UC San Diego, which is more prestigious than San Diego State. So I was like, you know what? I'm about to go where the researchers are. Very hard going from a semester system to a quarter system. You gotta hit the ground running. You don't have 16 weeks, it's 10 weeks. Like you get there, you're already doing midterms and finals, like from the moment, like with after two, three weeks, that's what it feels like. But I eventually found my tribe, joined like the TV um, production crew for the school. That's kind of where my lane was. So I was just gonna do TV and film. I came back after I graduated and I started singing with a band. So I was doing like a lot of different things. So I wasn't, I was just going where my spirit moved me. Basically, they call me Busy Bird and I literally, that's, I've been busy. I stay busy. So that's, I think that was the trajectory I wanted to be in entertainment, some form or fashion. Wellness. So this is usually the section I kind of highlight for those that say, oh, you own a weed shop. Well, I don't smoke weed, so I can't support you. Um, you do not have to smoke weed to partake in the benefits of the plant, okay? Do you golf? Do you have aches and pains? Do you um, need help sleeping? Do you want to spice it up in the bedroom, okay? Bath bombs, Epsom salts, there's so many things that can help you and you don't have to smoke. And the only time this gets tricky is if you have a job where you're being tested because some of these things can come up depending on some of the transdermals will come up. So if people get massages with CBD oils and they're not allowed to have any, this is exactly why it needs to be federally legal because people should be able to partake in CBD. It's not the um, psychoactive element that's gonna get you high at all. So that's another thing we'll be fighting for. But there's all the oils, patches, balms, tinctures, capsules and again my my favorite is like the bath bombs the pleasure oils um we even have something for your furry babies okay you know you taking a a, a flight somewhere or for fourth of july where all the fireworks are going to go crazy you know your dog is going to be super scared you can give them some cbd drops relax them um, there's something here for everybody and you don't have to be a weed head um to enjoy it so that's what I, I love this section because people come in and they're like, oh, it's not just about weed. No, it's not just about weed. Now we have that. how being a dispensary owner came to be. Um, I was afforded an opportunity. There was a group, an organization, that had an opportunity for individuals to get social equity licenses. And the idea was based off of like, hey, you can be a business owner, you can make some good money, you can lay a foundation for your future, create generational wealth, all the things. And that was something I was mostly interested in. I jumped at the opportunity. It was through the city. I got chosen to open a store. So the idea was that there was gonna be like just a franchise model of several stores. Mine ended up being store number two. The design and idea behind it was all based off of the organization. So it was something that we didn't really have a hand in um, as far as contributing ideas and things like that. We loved it, you know, once it was presented to us, 64 and Hope. It was just something that we were very excited to explore. Fast forward, we break ground, we open the store, everything looks beautiful, everyone is happy that comes in. 
we just didn't really have the full like marketing PR push behind it. So it wasn't doing as well as we needed it to. Last summer, summer of 2022, summer of 2022, all of a sudden we found out that our partners would no longer be able to support us and they were out. And with no warning, no heads up, no nothing, I had to figure out how to keep the doors open on my own. I had to learn the business side on my own while, you know, operating the store. So it's one thing to have the time to sit back and like study and all that, but I'm literally running the store while trying to learn. Learning accounting, learning, you know, IT, tech, support, all the things, but also trying to just keep that foundation for my team. Like the idea was to create job opportunities, career opportunities. And in the midst of uh, not knowing whether we were gonna sink or swim, I had to make that decision if I was gonna throw in the towel or if I was gonna fight. And I've been fighting all my life. I had to fight. Um, and so now we're here with the rebrand um, because I was introduced to the CEO of Off The Charts and um, it just seemed like the best move for me. I'm a mother, I need time with my kid and I was spending 20, I was here what, 24 seven or 25, eight <laughs> and that was taking a toll on me as well. Like mentally, physically and um, I'm really happy and proud that we're still here, one, that we still have support and we still have a really long way to go but I'm truly grateful for the opportunity that was bestowed upon me. So some people can move in bitterness and, and I'm not gonna lie, last summer was hard. Last summer was very, very hard. Um, there were so many feelings of abandonment and not knowing who to trust in business. And But without that experience, um, I wouldn't be here. So everything had to happen and it didn't happen to me, it happened for me. And that's kind of the perspective you have to take in everyday life. When anything happens that you don't understand or that may not be favorable, you have to take a step back and really look at what God is trying to show you or what is God is trying to really throw you in. I'm forever grateful for the opportunity that I got and I probably wouldn't change anything, which is crazy to say out loud. I wouldn't change it because I had to go through all that stuff. As far as obstacles, there are so many when navigating through the cannabis space because we are not federally legal. And what that means is no help from the government. But yet they still want us, they want to tax us like double as well. We get taxed on the on the purchase, we get taxed again to sell it. It's like three different taxes when you walk out the door. Excise tax, city tax, sales tax. There's literally three different taxes that can run up anywhere between 30 and 35% extra. So it's also very hard when we're competing with the black market, you know, all the homies, 
um, all of some of the people I went to school with. <laughs> uh, when you can get an eighth for a $20 bill, have a great one. But you can get an eighth for a $20 bill from the homie, but you come into a dispensary and now that $20 eighth, you're walking out the door and there's an extra $20 tacked on that. Um, it's a pain point for not only the consumer, the retailer as well, but what I like to always explain to people is the beauty of going to a legal dispensary is everything's regulated. So I don't know if back in the day, if you remember taking edibles, they had like sour belts and you just, every, every bite was different. So once I mastered it, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna take a half. Like I can't do a whole one, I'm gonna take a half. Cool, I got it, figured out, mastered. The next time that same exact edible, I would take the same amount and it would do something completely different to me. So without regulation, you just never know what you're getting. As opposed to walking into a legal dispensary, every milligram is the same, every bite is the same, you know what you're getting. I feel like right now in this day and age, there's a lot of crap being mixed in our goods. There's a lot of accidental overdoses due to fentanyl and people don't know what's in this stuff. And as we try to forge this new era of getting off the pharmaceutical drugs, because those are the real drugs, and be more like intentional about what we're doing and putting into our bodies, I think it's so important for the consumer to learn what serves them. There are people that come in here for anxiety, people that come in here for insomnia. I have people that have like IBS, um, restless leg syndrome. I have people that are going through chemo. I have so many different people and the healing benefits of the plant is so, so important. And so I try to press upon that when it comes to regulated versus non-regulated market. Other than that, we can get funding, normal funding at least. And we can get funding, but it's, we're paying back like almost half of what <laughs> we're getting loaned <laughs> and we're being taken advantage of in many situations. I feel like in this part of town, everyone is very accepting. It's a melting pot. Um, I don't think my race mattered um, being a business owner in this area or part of town per se. Um, I think what I was more concerned with was how I would be received as not only it, the type of business that I was running in this area as a black woman. I wondered if that was gonna be received well from the neighbors. Luckily, everyone has been super nice. I literally love my neighbors. I get along with everyone, even my, my business, my neighboring businesses, like I get along with everybody. If I would have been somewhere else, maybe I would have had some more issues, but I think generally speaking, Melrose District, Hollywood area is, I'm, I'm good. Oh, the, the cannons? Yeah, the cannons are very, very nice. Honestly, I'm not too big on uh, terpenes. I'm not the biggest fan of like my weed or my cannabis being very fruity. Um, it, it hit very strong. It's not something I can just like light up and put down or whatever. If I light it up, I'm gonna have to smoke the whole thing or share it with my friends, gotcha, you know? Gotcha. But um, if I was gonna go with like the horchata or something like that, I'd be able to smoke that whole thing by myself. Okay, and um, so you're not the biggest fan of like the keys on the outside either? No, not too much. Um, it's not that it's bad, it's just, it's just a luxury. I could take it or leave it if okay. I really want it. Okay. I like, what else do I like? I like the puffers. I haven't had really too many of those. Um, the watermelon is cool. Garden, so or Garden Society. I like the rosette or the um, the, the brighter day. day. Yeah, the brighter days were really cool. Honestly, the brighter days, I didn't even know that they were like actually hitting until the J was like completely done. If that makes oh. sense. Um, it wasn't a bad thing though. No, because it's gonna be more for like creativity. Exactly, a hundred percent. So That's like, mm -hmm. I felt that too for sure. And shout out to Garden Society, woman-owned brand. Fire, fire. <laughs> um, no, yeah, but they're really good quality. It didn't leave me stumped or stuck. It genuinely, and, and also I wasn't really thinking about it too much until I noticed it, if right, that makes sense. Right, right. Pacific Stone, can't really go wrong. I really love Pacific Stone. That's like, Aww. yeah, that's kind of just like my main, or it was my main brand for a while, but for the most part, 
Um, their Blue Dream can't really go wrong with Blue Dream. Right. So another one of my favorite categories are beverages, okay? Um, specifically for me, because I'm a little lightweight, um, I like to do the 10 milligrams. Um, these by Keith all taste like soda. They also have them in 100 milligrams as well. But I literally have had the root beer with ice cream and had an infused root beer float, best movie night ever. Um, Mary Jones is another really popular brand. They're from the original Jones cream sodas. They just decided to come out with a cannabis line. So they have the same flavors, the same um, taste. It's amazing. And then if you want to go for the big boys, for the 100 milligrams, we have these. Um, we also have some other ones over there I'll show you. But I like to suggest the beverages for people that are sober um, and still want to have a good time and elevate their, their mocktails. Because you can do like five milligrams of this, mix it with you know some mixers, and turn it into a cannabis cocktail and still be good. But your liver won't hate you later, you know, type of stuff. Okay, these are dangerous because the whole can is 100 milligrams, but the flavor, like it really tastes like sweet tea. And so you can down it and really be in trouble if your tolerance can't take it. The cool thing about them though, all of them have resealable tops which I feel like all soda cans should have now in 2023. But you can reseal it. So whatever you don't have, you can have a sip, put it back, seal it. You're not losing any of the carbonation. Um, it's amazing. And then we have a lot of these um, 100 milligram drinks. So you can eat, drink them by themselves or you can mix them. It's up to you. Pick your poison. Question. Is this something that was and this is Paps Blue Ribbon. So That's what I'm saying. Is this, this is a brand that, that, another brand that had regular, you know, like beers and things like that, yeah. that decided to make a cannabis line okay. as well. Because everyone knows that the future is cannabis. Let's keep it real. Everyone knows the future is cannabis. Everybody is trying to jump on because it's a billion dollar industry. THC, I think elixirs. Maybe the syrup or the tinctures, one of those. All right, so let me do your discount so that you're not paying full price for these. Discount, line item discount. Instead of you paying like 55, you're paying 43. This is a really good one. That's probably our favorite out of the uh, tinctures. Okay, well, let's hook him up. Well, I know he's getting the early bird special. So you are eligible for our first time patient discount. Would you want that? It's a 40% off. Yeah, that Would you like the free pre-roll as well, or you? <laughs> that was the last one on the floor. Yeah, think so, yeah. Um, oh, CBG. You're doing the CBG. CBG, CBD, THC. This quail. This quail one might be good too. Um, so this has CBG, THC, CBD. This has CBD, CBG, THC as well. And then it's got chamomile for calm, relaxed, stress relief. Yeah, that's all. Yeah, you want to try this one too? Yeah. Okay. Because there is the early bird special, $5 off, and it's $65. Ooh, so, cash. Huh? You got a vlog on it? <laughs> Something like that. We're doing a day in the life. Um, my boy. Bucci? Yeah. Oh my goodness, this ain't got a Bucci. So when it comes to vendors, that's probably one of the most important relationships you're gonna have as a retailer. Um, they supply you with products, products that some customers come looking for, specific, you know, products. Like, you gotta make sure you have your Stizzies, your Jeters, your Alien Labs, um, Dabwoods, 
Camino gummies. There's certain brands that you know you have to have and you have to keep them stocked. The relationship you have with your vendors, those partnerships are very unique in the sense that it's not just, I'm just gonna buy product, leave it on the shelves and that's it. Um, you want support in sell through. Sometimes you get product that does not move. And it's important to have that relationship with brand support because then they'll come in, they'll offer, you know, promo, ghost promos or promotions. They'll come in, set up PADs, which are patient appreciation demos, where they'll come, set up swag, help you sell out, sell your, um, your products for a few hours, um, do buy one, get one ideas and things like that. Um, and then bud tender training. Like, the bud tenders are literally the bone of the cannabis industry when it comes to retail because they are the ones that sell the product. You want your bud tender to be well informed, knowledgeable, have experience because some people come in here and they actually do need assistance. Some people come in and they know what they want, they're in and out. There are some people that come in, this might be their first time walking into a dispensary and they're like overwhelmed by all of the options and some people are like, I just need something for sleep or I need something for anxiety. Somebody that has anxiety is not gonna want a sativa generally. So if I have a bud sender that isn't knowledgeable and doesn't know that, they're gonna send somebody off with something that's gonna cause them to have a really bad like reaction or bad experience, which means they're not coming back. You know, and that's important, like is the retention. When people walk in here, it's like family, right? What are we doing today? What do we What do we have planned today? What do we do? What kind of vibes are we trying to fulfill today? So then I can have a better idea of what where we're leaning towards. So vendors and bud tenders, like that, having that aligned, um, is really the best thing that you need for any successful dispensary. Um, on top of outreach, community events, giveaways are nice, but really community events is really what drives the force for the culture. Um, oh, I would love to highlight some black-owned brands. Um, we've got Cadre in the building. Cadre is in the building, which is also um, one of our other off-the-charts locations. Um, off-the-charts, powered by Cadre. Shout out to Madison Shockley the um, third. I love, love, love their products and they fly off the shelf. So make sure you go to your local dispensary if I'm not one of them and ask for Kranja. And Kranja is another black owned um, brand as well. So once we turned to off the charts, they did our first order of all the SKUs that off the charts has. Um, so I think we got maybe like 80% of what all the other off the charts have carry currently. We're, and we're, we're growing. And so far, I'm enjoying the team we're putting together. I'm excited. And I'm letting my team, my team of managers take control like they're doing the they're doing the hiring right now. We're in the process of hiring some new people, and I am giving it all to them. And so I'm looking at them and I'm like, "This is your team you're building, and I trust that you're going to build a great team. So go team! Like normally I have a say in everything. I need to be on the second interviews. I need. To, this is the first time where I'm like, go, because these are going to be your problems. The legacy I want to leave to my son is one, the element of grinding, working hard for what you want, never giving up, persevering, and always doing what's best for the family, what's best for the team. Um, the legacy I want to leave behind is I want him to know that he can't just expect to get things handed to him. And I want him to strive to want to work hard for everything that's worth having in this life. And I want to leave to him any and everything I can to make sure that his life is sustainable, the generations that he creates after that are sustainable. Um, the idea is to make sure that each generation is better. 
than the one before. And that's what I really, really want to leave for him. I don't know if you know this about our smellers, but um, so it's got the magnifying glass. Actually, I want to do this one. This mug looks better. So you've got the magnifying glass. You can pick it up, get a closer look, and then if you press on the back here, you can smell it. Hmm, just a nice little aroma. It's like coffee in the morning. And then all of our... No, they, the, the, the partners, they got all that. Nobody had them. We were the first ones. Yeah, we were the first ones to have them. Um, and now there's just, it's hard to get replacements, as you can see. Our informational cards, it'll give you the breakdown of the moods. So sometimes people want indica, but they don't want to be in the couch, right? So it'll give you the moods, like relax, euphoric, happy, the percentages, the price. We have prices before tax and out the door on all of our stuff. Sometimes people just want to do their own math. And they're like, I came in with 50. I came in with 30. I came in, this is what my budget is. And so we like to be able to make everyone feel comfortable. Whether you want to spend $5 or you want to spend 300, we got you covered. So we have, there's two locations and this other location has a separate owner, but we work hand in hand. We call each other cellmates a.k.a. Sellies, because we've been in the trenches together. Um, it's been a traumatizing experience, this journey of ownership in the, way in, which, in the way in which it was designed for us. So she just did the switch. So now we're both off the charts. So we're moving together. We ride or die together. Shout out to Asia. My Selly, that's um, off the charts, now off the charts on La Cienega. 2000 South La Cienega. Make sure you pull up. Um, support your girls. It didn't give me the option to keep them both portrait, which is why I just did it sideways on the landscape, but I just wanted to make, because it's the back side of the portrait. Yeah, it looks like it's gonna align properly on the card. Okay, so when, so the grand opening will be on one side and then when you turn it over, it's gonna be the back side up, upright. Yes. Okay. Yes, the orientation on both of them looks fine. I just don't want it to be oh, flip flop. Oh, you were just oh, you were concerned because they were like, no, don't worry about that. We're, we're gonna cut them down to each other portraits. <laughs> okay, okay, because I was like, I don't want to flip it over and it's upside down on the back. So you should get an email notification once we mark the order ready. Okay, thank you so much. You're welcome. Have a great one. Bye bye. Bye. So for me, ownership is very important and specifically being a black owner in this space in the cannabis industry is even more important because it's facing extinction. It never really existed um, in this space in the manner which it should based off the fact that cannabis was really built off the backs of black and brown people. Um, which is why they were heavily policed and certain neighborhoods were heavily targeted. We're in last place in an industry that we low-key started <laughs> is, is crazy, one. Um, but then being a woman, a black woman in this space, we used to make up maybe 4% a few years back and now it's even lower than that. Um, so when I say facing extinction, like we're almost non-existent when it comes to just being represented in the space. And so I think it's important because my little decimal matters. I'm fighting for that. And it's not easy when you don't get the regular funding and support that you could get if it was a normal business. It's also important for me because based off of my family lineage, my parents were just immigrants from Belize you know, and they got here and they were able to afford me a better upbringing so that I can have a better outcome and a better future. And that's something that I see myself striving for when it comes to my son, creating a better future for him and the generations that, to come. That's something that my parents have both instilled in me is working hard for what you want. And they had no choice coming to the United States from Belize, that that's what they had to do. And they've made a good life and a good living for themselves. And I just have to continue that that legacy. I just want to get on camera that these are my trenches. Like when I say trenches, these are my trenches. Day one, they could have jumped ship. I could have jumped ship <laughs> as the captain of the damn boat. Um, but they've been rocking with me and they are the reason why I'm still here, spiritually, physically. 
um, emotionally, mentally, all of the please. <laughs> um, and yes, Jordan and Randy, my rocks. So don't play with us, and I don't play about them. All right? West side. <laughs> <laughs> no, West side. <laughs>tell my 19 or 20 year old self a few things one buckle up it's about to get bumpy get ready it's not all rainbows and sunshine but even in the darkness you're gonna light it up no matter what as long as you stay the course know God's got you and he's not gonna put more on you than you can bear anything that he brings to you he will get you through it more importantly what I've recognized about myself is that I ask a lot of questions. I'm very inquisitive and it's because I wanna know. I've been made to feel in the past that me asking questions or too many questions looked like I was difficult to work with when all I wanted to do was know and learn. So I would also tell my 19 or 20 year old self, don't stop asking questions. Don't stop looking for answers. Don't stop figuring it out because that's what all it is it's figuring everything out and there are going to be times where you're going to have really good people in your corner that can assist you and there's going to be times where you're going to be all on your own and you're going to have to figure it out but either way don't stop trying to find resolutions and solutions to any and everything going around you and remember that anyone that tells you that you're difficult just means that you're difficult to take advantage of and lean in that, lean on that, and keep going. Because that means your net, your foot is on their necks. So my five to 10 year plan, um, what that would look like for me. Um, ideally, cannabis going federally legal, which could make operations a lot easier, meaning tax breaks, meaning better funding, meaning um, I can bring my son in here to work with me if I need to, because that's something I cannot do yet. He can walk into a liquor store, he can walk into a bar, he can walk into all the things. I don't necessarily see myself here in five to 10 years, but I do see my store running smoothly like a well-oiled machine, possibly maybe on the closer to the 10 year side, even if I'm at a point where I'm able to sell, get a nice chunk and start something else, but within the cannabis space um, for me, being in front of the camera, behind the camera, now I feel like I have a bigger due diligence to decrease the stigma around cannabis and just get the story out there of why it's so important to support black and brown um, ownership and brands and cultivations and distros. Because I notice, I notice when you're not black or brown and you're afforded the capital, you jump in when it's good. You don't jump in when it's bad. And that's, that's a good business move, sure. But the ones that started it, they get stepped on. And so I would love to see a different space um, in regards to cannabis for black and brown people and for women, women of all color, because women, we also get the short end of the stick as well um, in a male dominated industry. So for me, if I'm able to get an, get an opportunity to get a good chunk, sell this, turn that into something else regarding cannabis on the entertainment side, or even starting a different brand, that would be amazing. And then being able to spend more time with my son and my family, um, that's something I strive for because I'm here 25-8, um, and I would really love to dial it back a little bit, which it's starting to happen now because my trenches are really stepping it up and that's why they're important. So I want to be able to do that from the sidelines and not so much hands on on the operational side. So we'll see what these next five years look like.
legal herbal florist <laughs> at Off the Charts Hollywood. Make sure you pull up on us. We're at 6803 Melrose Avenue. We're open seven days a week, 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. So make sure you come and say hi to your favorite buds. And thanks for taking the time to check in on a day in a life. Have a good one.